Hey, Dr. Lindsay here. You know, I've posted many times and discussed that there's really three potential errors that you got to avoid when you do hair transplant surgery, whether you're the doctor or a prospective patient. Big scar, hairline too low, and too little hair over too much bald head. And uh, recently I had a fellow come in for a consultation that I had, I haven't worked on. I was able to snap a few pictures of his head. Uh, and he had a particular problem that makes him almost impossible to fix. And in talking with him, uh, I recognized that we had just done a guy that has the same problem, but was fixable, or at least most likely fixable. And so uh, let me uh, show you these two uh, patients' heads and discuss a little bit about how to avoid potential problems and again reiterate make sure that you do your research. Forums like this are a great tool uh, for you before you have surgery uh, and come into the doctor's office uh, kind of knowing what, what you think your options are and discuss with the doctor what, you know, what's best for you. One extreme, doing a big surgery. On the other extreme, maybe doing nothing and finding out the whole range of potential plant options that you have and going home and sleeping on it and then uh, making a commitment to do what, what works out best for you. Uh, thanks for your time. So this fellow came uh, walking in for an appointment uh, recently and uh, wanted to know what his options were. And he gave me a history of having uh, a strip surgery about 10 years ago, which addressed we're probably thinning frontal triangles and really nothing across here. And then uh, he was a young guy at the time uh, with a family history of turning out to be class six or seven uh, hair loss. And he stated that uh, initially uh, his frontal triangles did look improved, but fairly quickly he started losing more and more hair. And uh, he went back to the fellow that worked on him and was put on medicines and continued to lose hair and then uh, roughly two years ago, sorry three years ago, uh, he was advised to have an automated FUE procedure uh, which he did twice and uh, his history is that he received 2,000 FUEs twice uh, and the first round was placed in the front for the frontal third of his head and the second round was placed in the posterior third of his head. Uh, and uh, he was advised to wait and then eventually would grow in. And he's just gotten frustrated and came to see what his options are. And this poor fellow's in a bad situation. Uh, first of all, he's a young guy. He's got very poor quality hair transplant and when I show you the, the back in a second, he's got significant donor depletion from his previous surgery. He's got a large bald scalp that would need to have some hair put in it. And he's had really poor results with uh, his previous FUE. And I would say his uh, strip case didn't um, turn out so uh, good either. That doesn't look like 1500 grafts. Uh, which is what he says that uh, he got back in uh, 2005. So he has two of the three problems with hair transplants. The first problem is hairline too low. Well, he doesn't have that. That's the good news. Uh, when his hairline was, was designed in 2005 and he was still in his 20s, at least it wasn't put as a, a straight line across his forehead. It came back and that had that hair grown in that would be a hairline that would hold up as somebody ages, assuming you have plenty of hair in here. The second potential problem with hair surgery is too much scarring, and I'll show that in just a second. And the third is too little hair over too much bald head. You know, if, even if this guy had a virgin head in the back, and we could do several strip cases and maybe some FUE or modified FUE, we can probably start from here and maybe get to here with several surgeries. But this is a lost cause back here uh, given the amount of hair loss he has and the amount of donor hair he has to work with. So let me show his next picture. So 
So here's his donor region. And up underneath this band of hair that he keeps long, and again, he's not my patient to operate on yet. I was just able to take these pictures with him in for a consultation for illustrative purposes. He's got a scar that's probably eight or nine millimeters wide uh, from his strip scar, scar in, in uh, 2005. And then if you look carefully, it looks really thin and donor depleted through here. And then if you look even more carefully, you see a dot, 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 all over, even all the way down into the nape of his neck. Let me try to zoom forward and see whether we can see that a little better. So I think you can probably see, see those spots. I mean, they're just everywhere. Uh, and so he had lots of spots made, or lots of FU punches made, really got nothing from it. And it does look like they at least got the roots of these guys because there's nothing growing out through this white spots. And I took one more close up of it. And that's Here's my hand up here. This is the right side of his neck. Spot, 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 spot. And you could, I think he did get a couple thousand uh, attempts at FUE and some of them still have hairs coming out of them, but a lot of them don't. They're just deep pigmented white spots. And so he is now in a tough predicament. And so, so he's got really three choices. One is simply to shave off that area in the front and keep his hair long enough back here to cover things. And while that's not a great choice, that might be the best choice for him. And the other choice is to try to get some hair from back here by way of strip or modified FUE. Probably not FUE because I think that's going to be a scar filled head back there and give him some hair in the middle and fill these. But I think the best case scenario, even with maybe two procedures by me, would be to give him a, some weak hair to kind of frame the, the frontal one-fourth or even one-fifth of his, of his head. Now that's a tough, tough break. I told him I didn't know which of those two would be the best choice for him. Um, because if you shave this off, you're going to have a lot of irregular skin. And if you try to fix it, it's you're going to go through a, a fair amount of work and probably a year and a half or two years worth of time. And still, it's only going to be a mediocre result. And we were sitting here talking, and I thought, you know, I've seen this hair before. Four days before. So then we walked over to the, this computer, and I showed him what, uh, so in the same case with a slight variation. And this guy, uh, and this guy's folder was sitting right on top of my desk. And he was the guy we had done uh, four days before the consulting patient showed up. And look at this. This is the same exact uh, series of events. He's got two frontal triangles that were done when he was young, and he lost the rest of his hair. That, I mean, how unlikely is it to have two guys show up in the same week with exactly the same problem? Now, the advantage that this guy has, and the reason why we worked on him, is he's got pretty decent hair. It's not perfect hair, but it's pretty decent hair uh, along the sides. And he did get some results from his frontal triangles, and he's my age, uh, and he's got some salt and pepper gray hair, that's an old guy's way of, old guy's way of saying uh, a lot of gray hair, but trying to stay young, like I do. And he's got something to work with, and I think with two cases we can probably get him some hair back to here. Again, this crown is a lost cause on a guy that's got donor depletion. So our plan with this guy is as follows. We looked at his donor area, and unlike a previous strip, he got done be before strip surgery. But look at it. I mean, there's a zillion plug scars back here. But at least those plug hairs grew and gave him some hair up front to work with. 
And so we cut a strip out of him. And I think we got somewhere around 1,600 graphs out of him. And then we made recipient slits, and if you look carefully, he's got hair in all these spots. So when we do these plug repairs, and this is a, the, one of the more interesting plug repairs I've, I've worked on, because there was nothing in the whole middle. So this is just a regular hair transplant. But over here, we packed along and around the hairs he's already paid for before shaving them off. And then he's got hairs in here, so there's no slits for new hair. So that's the recipient area. And that's at the end of the case. And again, uh, were this a virgin head, you would expect to see hair all through here. On these uh, repair cases, there's not there's no graphs in here because he's already he's got existing hair that he's already paid for that's working in that area. And here's the other side. Again, we got I don't know the front fifth dealt with this case, and he's easily got another 1,500 graphs we can get by strip, which will get us to here. And then even then, after that, we can probably get another thousand by modified FUE uh, down the road. I'm not sure he'll go for that because uh, I think if we just fix the front third uh, or front 40 percent uh, he'll be satisfied with, uh, with that repair. And this is him at a week. So he went from having two little corners and a landing zone up the middle or a runway up the middle to now eventually he'll have hair that grows in and covers here. Uh, and I say eventually because these old scarred in plug repairs always take a bit more time to uh, grow out that virgin head. And then he's got enough hair certainly to cover uh, his donor scarring from his old surgeries and his strip scar from today. And there's still plenty of hair back here uh, to deal with uh, future cases and work further back. So while they're very similar guys with very similar problems, this fella is improvable and the other fella probably isn't. And that's a tough thing to have to tell somebody. So again, look at a consulting patient has very little to work with. The guy that we did, even after doing 1600 grass by strip, he's still got plenty of hair to work with back here for a, for a second case, maybe even a third. But again, how odd is it to see the same problem which I really, I mean, this is probably the first time I've seen this problem in this severity in, I don't know, five or six years. But to see two of these guys in the same week, uh, it's just, it's uncanny. Again, because of his quality and quantity of hair and limited amount of area we, to fix, this guy is likely improvable. And so we did his surgery. And because of the limitations this fellow has, I'm not sure that's improvable. So bottom line is, this is why you do research before you commit to surgery and uh, plan for the future. You know, always plan for the worst. Young guys coming in, recognize that you really got a, I just got a phone call from a, from a young guy that has a similar, you know, losing up here. And he wanted to kind of sprinkle a little hair all over. I mean, fix this right and then when you lose more hair you can work your way back but don't waste 4,000 FUEs and get nothing for it um, I feel bad for that guy so the forums like this are an excellent tool for prospective patients to get educated before they come to their consultation so they can ask the right questions and make sure that they work on and create a plan that fits their uh, goals. Thanks.